The Mega Prince is a fly that works wonders. I was originally introduced to it by a steelhead fisherman who had me tie some for him. I had a lot of fun tying them and decided to try fishing them for trout. The results have been fantastic. I have had the most success with them in late fall through to early spring, and they are especially great just before the major stonefly hatches. As always, a list of the materials I used in this video can be found in the description below. Start off the fly with a bead already on the hook, and while it's not necessary, I would still recommend using some lead wire as well. Not only will it add weight, but it'll help to build the proper proportions to imitate a stonefly. For now, you can push the bead and the lead out of the way. Start your thread immediately behind the hook eye and create a very small dubbing noodle out of ice dub. Use this to create a small ball of dubbing just behind the eye, then lay down a few turns of thread on the shank just behind it. Silly legs are used to imitate the antenna. I like to cut the silly legs in half. Then I wrap one of those halves around the thread and pull it up behind the fly until it rests on top of the hook by itself. Take a few more turns of thread to hold this in place. Then place the ends on either side of the hook, holding them in place with your hand while taking a few wraps to lock them in position. I like to do both sides at once, though you may find it easier to do each side one at a time. You should end up with antenna that split on either side of the dubbing ball we created. If yours don't, then you should be able to gently pull them into position. Once satisfied with how they sit, take a few more wraps to lock them in place. It is common at this point to slide the bead forward and jump the thread over the bead, but a little extra step can make this fly far more durable. Take open spiral wraps down the shank and put a single half hitch on the shank. Cut your thread, leaving a small tag remaining. Don't cut it too short or it might fall apart too early. Now you can slide the bead over the thread and undo the half hitch and unravel the thread until you're at the bead. Generally, just rubbing your finger over the knot will undo it. Hold that tag end firmly and put the tag from the thread you are about to start with it. Then form a jam knot here by covering both tags at the same time. Now you can cut the tags and push the lead up into the bead. Don't worry if the little bits of thread stick out, this will get covered at some point. Take a few turns of thread to get behind the lead and build up a thread dam to hold it in place. Now work over the lead going back and forth until it is secure. End with your thread about even with the hook barb. The tail is made up of two materials. First, we are going to use some grizzly marabou. Take a clump and measure it to be about one half of the hook shank in length, then tie it in where you left your thread. Take a few thread wraps to hold it in place, then cut it so it butts up to the lead wire. Take several more thread wraps to secure it, ending with your thread where the lead starts. Using the same technique as earlier, add another half of a silly leg to form the tail. Trim these to be about one and a half times the length of the marabou. Tie in a piece of copper wire along the length of the fly and secure it all the way down to the base of the tail. The body of the fly is made from peacock curl. Take about five to eight strands and cut the tips so they are all aligned. Tie in the tips so that they also butt up against the lead wire. Move your thread up to be a short distance behind the bead. Twist up the peacock curl to form a rope and begin taking turns up the shank. Try to form a slight taper as you go up the hook, ending about where you left your thread. Tie off the peacock by taking wraps on either side of it, then cut the peacock off close.
If you have a rotary vise, put in a half hitch, otherwise just wrap the wire forward, going the opposite direction as the hurl. Place the first wrap of wire under the tail and pull it tight. This helps to keep the tail aligned with the body and prevents it from angling down. Once you have reached the end of the hurl, take one more wrap of wire to act as an anchor, then take a couple of wraps on either side of the wire and helicopter or cut it off. One last time, employ the same technique to secure a half of a silly leg just behind the bead, then take a few wraps back, holding one leg on either side so that they angle backwards. A soft tackle feather is used to form a collar, just like on a prince. I like to use hen neck feathers, but there are lots of other feathers that could be used here as well. Prepare the feather by cutting it near the bottom and strip the fibers off, leaving a bare stem. Tie it in just in front of the legs, making sure the dark side of the feather is facing towards you. Take a few turns forward, making sure the dark side of the feather is facing the front of the fly the entire time. Then tie off the feather just behind the bead by placing wraps on either side of it to lock it into place. Then cut it off close. Gently stroke the fibers back and take a few thread turns over the base of the fibers so that they angle back just a little bit. You can cut the legs at any point, though I typically do it here. I like them to extend a little past the body. Take two white goose biots and hold them in an X formation, resembling a pair of scissors. Then transfer them into your other hand where they cross. Measure them to about the end of the body then pinch them down with a finger from your first hand. Take a couple of wraps and check the position of the biots. Often you will need to make adjustments and now is the perfect time to do so. Once you are happy with how they look, take a few more thread wraps to secure them. Then cut the biots so the butt ends stick out just a little bit over the bead. Usually a large bead makes it so that you can simply pull them back with a finger. Though if it is proving difficult, you can sneak the thread under the biots and pry them up to the point that you can easily pull them back with your finger. Once they are leaning back, take several thread wraps in front of them until they start to fold more, then take wraps over the butt ends until they are mostly covered. These flies ride the bottom and take a beating, so we want those biots anchored really well. Finish off the fly by creating another dubbing noodle out of ice stub and add just enough to continue the body taper and cover any exposed parts. Then whip finish just behind the bead and cut your thread free. It certainly isn't as quick to tie as something like a Pat's rubber leg, but the Mega Prince is a lot of fun to tie and can be absolutely deadly. In my area, this wasn't being fished much, and I think just giving the trout something new gave me a real edge, especially in the more pressured waters. Give this fly a try and let me know how it goes. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I try to respond to all of them. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like it. Thanks for watching and tight lines.